Welcome to Reading Strategies at Work. I'm Melanie Golding. I'm the Elementary Reading Curriculum Manager in HISD. Today, we will be looking at 411A, Summarize the Main Idea and Supporting Details in Text in Ways that Maintain Meaning. We realize that this standard is heavily, heavily tested on STAR using informational text. So because it's heavily tested, it's tested in a variety of ways. One of the ways that it's tested is the state usually presents our students with um, this particular, what particular detail from this selection supports the main idea that blah, blah, blah. And then our students have to identify that supporting detail. The other way that they assess it is that they sometimes ask our students, what is the best summary of paragraphs one to paragraphs three, where they're asking them not to summarize the entire piece of the text, but sections of the text together. And then finally, another way that they're assessed is they, the state will ask our students that, to look at what do the details in paragraphs blah, 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 explain about this specific topic. Now, the two strategies that I'm going to share with you today that align with this standard, I selected them specifically because they lend themselves really well to not just support reading instruction when looking at expository text, but teachers can also use these same exact strategies to teach our students how to write expository compositions as well. When introducing boxes and bullets, you want to explain to your students that most authors that write expository um, pieces organize the text in a way where they present a main idea or a big topic and then supporting details to explain that topic further. This will help our students in thinking as they're reading each section of the text to identify what's the main idea or what's the big topic and then plot out the supporting details that follow. So in longer pieces of text, I would advise that you chunk the text in ways that will make it much easier for your students to do boxes and bullets. Because as they're doing this strategy, what you're really having them do is, as they're reading, they're thinking, is this a sentence that may go in the box? Or is this a sentence that may go in the bullets with the supporting details? So I would first model this. So I will pick maybe a paragraph or two in a section that kind of goes together. And I would read it and then I would ask my students to tell me, okay guys, we've just read this and gotten the gist of it. What do you think the main idea of my text is? And I'll take their ideas and suggestions and then write out a main idea sentence. And as I've, we've identified what that main idea is, then the rest of our task is to now identify, we filled out the box, now we need to figure out what are the bullets that goes underneath that. So I may have my students work together to read the different pieces of the text and then identify what specifically, what are the big important ideas that we can put as supporting details with that main idea. Now, once our students have done this, section by section, then we can tell them to take each of the main ideas from section one, section two, section three, and so on to create a overall summary of that article or that piece of text. Now what's beautiful about doing boxes and bullets where our students will be more supported on STAR is that if they have a question that asks them, what is the best summary of paragraphs one to three? Imagine if they've already been doing boxes and bullets for each of those paragraphs, then it's very easy for them to come up with the summary of paragraphs one to three because all they'll have to do is find the main ideas that they came up with in doing boxes and bullets for those particular paragraphs. Now, I always encourage you to use the gradual release of responsibility when teaching your mini lessons with your students. So yes, you model and you do one part, then the second part I would have them do together. So put them in a group and have them do fill out the, the graphic organizer for boxes and bullets of that particular section 
bring everyone back and then talk to them a little bit about it. And then finally, you'll have them do some boxes and bullets on their own. Um, remember, every reading strategy, the power in that strategy is not when you're guiding the students to do the activity, but when they're able to apply that to their independent reading when they're reading on their own. So three things to remember in doing boxes and bullets. One, you want to be very selective about the text and chunk the text for the students. You don't want to give them a whole three-page article and have them just go at it with the boxes and bullets. You may want to chunk it for them. Secondly, you want to model it. Model what you expect from your students. Walk them through your thinking. As you read, ask yourself questions. Hmm. Is this a good sentence for um, a box or is this a good bullet sentence? Let me think about that. And then finally, we want to always, always, always have our students discuss the strategy, discuss the sentences that they're choosing to put in the box, the sentences that they're choosing to put in the bullet. So remember, the person that's doing the talking is the person that's doing the learning. So we want to give our students extra opportunities to talk to each other about what they're finding as the main idea, the boxes, and what they're identifying as the bullets, which is our supporting details. The second strategy I'd like to share for 411A is called OR, O-R-E. It stands for Opinion, Reason, Evidence. I've also seen some teachers use it as Opinion, Reason, examples. Either way you go, what we're asking our students is three questions. As they're reading the text, they need to identify what is the author's opinion on this particular topic? What reasons do the author give to support that opinion? And then what evidence or examples does the author give to back up or support the reasons that they've, they're given. When I build this anchor chart with my students to explain this strategy, I'd like to explain to my students that sometimes authors come right out and they tell us, this is my opinion on this, here's the reasons why I think this way, and here's the evidence to support it. But then sometimes the inverse can happen. So when I build my ice cream cone to show the opinions, the reasons, and then the evidence, sometimes I invert that um, ice cream cone to show them that sometimes some authors like to give us the evidence and the reasons and then at the end tell us, because of these things, this is my opinion. Either way you go, what you're asking your students to do is dig a little deeper in the text. Our students sometimes think that because they're reading informational text, it is not riddled with bias. But what we will need to teach our students is that on STAR especially, our students are being asked to analyze the author's craft. So what was the author thinking as they wrote this piece? What details did the author put in this to support this opinion or this, their thinking? Our students can't get there if they're not able to read between the lines. So we ask, again, those three questions. What's the author's opinion on the topic? What reasons do they give to support that opinion? And then what evidence do they use to back up those reasons? So when you introduce this with your students, you want to be selective. You want to think about a piece of text where I like to start off where the author comes right out and says, so you want to be president? There are some good and bad things about being president. Let me tell you all the good stuff. Now let me tell you all the bad stuff. This is why being a president could be good or bad. So you want to take something that is very blatant and explicit to model with your students first so they just get the gist of the thinking and the questions that they need to do. Now for your we do part of the, your um, graduate release cycle, where that's where you may want to introduce um, a piece where the opinion is somewhat implied based on the examples that, that the author gives. You may want to select some, a piece on maybe recycling where the author really leans towards the, um, the, the positive um, qualities of recycling, but it never quite come out and say we should all recycle, but they give us all the reasons why. Um, those pieces are good for your, your guided practice where the students are working together in groups and you can kind of walk around and guide their thinking. But ultimately, 
when you release them on your own, what you will find is that there are pieces that have a little mixture of both where the author comes out, kind of tells you what they're thinking, but then there's some, uh, there is places where they may contrast their thinking. So we want to really give our kids opportunities to kind of delve into just looking at what is the author's opinion and then how they support that thinking. Now, three things to remember when you're doing or is you want to, again, always I say be very selective about the text that you choose to model this strategy with. Give your students an opportunity to read the text from beginning to end, just so they have a gist of it before they start trying to pick apart and identify what the author's opinions are. Then secondly, you want to give them an opportunity. I always say this, you want to give them an opportunity to model your thinking. So model, model, model. Ask the questions as you're reading the text that you want them to answer because you constantly asking those questions, it ingrains it in our students' head that these are the questions that they should be asking as they're reading as well. And then finally, I always say, give them an opportunity to discuss their thinking because what I may feel, especially if the, uh, if the opinion is implied and not, not stated, then you want to give your students an opportunity to discuss what it is that they're thinking. In that discussion, here are some beautiful things that come out of that. I may read a piece of text and think one way. You may read it and think another way. But when you and I sit and we talk to each other, then I start to realize that there are a couple different ways that I can look at this text. Well, that's where we want our students to go, especially if they're going to be answering multiple choice questions about text because it opens up their mind to look for evidence that supports the different answer choices that they're given. So again, you want to select your be selective about your text, model, 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 and then give your students opportunities to discuss. And remember, the person that does the talking is the person that's doing the learning. So you want to give them opportunities to talk. Now, I specifically chose these two strategies to share with you for 411A because they align themselves really, really well for reading instruction and also for writing instruction. So how would I use or, for example, for writing, I may ask my students, what is your opinion on this topic? That's their central idea. That becomes their introductory sentence. Then I may ask them to give me now, tell me, what are some specific reasons why you have that opinion? That's their reasons. Now back it up with some evidence. That's the body of their paper. And then finally, I may ask them to restate your opinion again. So we're following that model of tell me what you're going to tell me, right? Tell me and then tell me what you told me. So that's or, it then becomes Oreo when we're doing it for writing. Now with boxes and bullets, this is a great way for our, for our writers to organize their thinking. In the box is your central idea. What are you writing about? And then in your bullets now are the supporting details that go with that central idea. Again, a great way to organize our writing pieces for our expository writing. So I hope you're able to use both of these strategies to support your reading and your writing instruction. Thank you for watching Reading Strategies at Work. We hope these instructional strategies help you further student learning and achievement.